Aquarius and Moon all rising June 2022. All right, Aquarius. Um, the planet that rules you, Saturn, is turning retrograde. Probably that's the biggest influence for you this month. Let's start with it. At the same time, Mercury is turning direct, but I want to talk first about Saturn retrograde because the last 10 days of May and the first five days of June, Saturn is almost stationary. It's not moving. So you might have felt like things are slowing down, that you're stopping yourself about something or that you're taking a step back to detach yourself from a certain circumstance or situation and to see it from a different perspective, more detached perspective. That's one good thing that can happen. So you can start changing your direction with certain projects, with certain initiatives that you've been doing already for a while because Saturn retrograde is something that, that you will, will be rethinking and seeing from a different perspective about something you've been doing. It might be how you've been treating your body if it's your ascendant, how you've been uh, some new project that you've been doing, uh, all basically something that you started before that you have to revise, redo over the next five months, restructure, organize more carefully, uh, also diminish, make, make smaller, um, make more efficient, make, make more productive and more focused. And for me, for example, that's my whole business that and my whole image that I'm trying will try to restructure in the next five months. The whole astral ladder brown, because Saturn is going retrograde in my first house. And I kind of really stepped back from working for a little bit in the last few days, weeks. So I can think of this new, uh, something that already exists, my business, my brand, who is me, to redo it, you know, uh, to, to change it, to maybe diminish it. Not so many followers, but more focused content. So it's some hard work you'll be doing for, for the next five months. But the final result can be fantastic. More streamlined image, project. That is even be that requires three times more efforts though in the next five months and you might notice like things don't move so smoothly or they move slower than expected have patience happening is in your first house have patience you'll end up with something beautiful something long lasting uh, as long as you're not rushing it and of course if Saturn is retrograding over your sun sign in Aquarius you can be rethinking your career some project in or rethinking relationships with important men or some important developments that sometimes are more complicated with important men or father figures in your life um, or rethinking your own again image and direction in life uh, if it's of course the ascendant I said it can be even your body Saturn can help you make smaller your body more uh, if you're feeling lower energy levels it can be possible as well you have the power to say no when Saturn is in your sign, whether it's your Sun, Moon or Ascendant, they all relate somehow to your health and to your body. And to, to say no to certain things that are harming your body or certain practices. And you might feel a little bit more limited in your movement, especially with the Ascendant, in your physical movement, but in a more focused, concentrated way. So it might be a good time to do some heavy lifting, to do some strengthening of the body because Saturn wants to make something harder, strengthen it, you know, um, and, and to make it smaller as well, <laughs> tighter and smaller. And of course, if it's your moon in Aquarius, Saturn going retrograde in your moon sign can indicate revisiting old emotional patterns and family patterns from the past, rethinking your relationship to your family, to your ancestors, and taking a resolve not to repeat and with repeated effort and extra effort to an awareness every time you repeat some pattern that comes from family from early childhood to correct it to you know to eliminate it almost uh, and it might require a lot of focus attention for four, for four or five months to do that but by the time something starts moving direct you would have made it part of you, you it would become natural for you but you have to do the hard work for the next five months and also it can be some re-evaluation of relationships with the moon as well, because the moon is connected to that. All right. Um, and, and some complications there that you have to deal with and some patterns in relationships that you repeat, that you have to slowly undo or slowly unlearn or restructure. But overall, we have a, you, you become more introspective, more self-focused in a sense, because it's in our first house where the sun, moon or ascendant, 
more critical towards yourself, giving yourself more hard time, but because Saturn is in its own sign, the ultimate goal will be to make you better. And there can be more awareness of aging and getting older or time running and, and have time advancing. So you really want to, to really rethink your priorities in the next five months. That's the last time Saturn will be retrograde in Aquarius for 30 years as well. So rethinking your priorities can lead to, come to this new start for you which leaves you unburdened from many unnecessary things. And you might have to say goodbye to many things when you're restructuring your life and who you want to be, where you want to be. This first house is all about you. And focusing it more on yourself rather than on others. This is important. I don't think it's a selfish thing. But there's a deep internal process of cleansing of the old happening inside. And some old things and themes from the past can come back when Saturn is retrograde especially to the later born Aquarius, you know, those from 25 to 15 degrees, 15 to 25 degrees in the next five months. Uh, so you can, so you're building some new foundations gradually, slowly, don't push the process again, like I said. Um, and then Mercury is turning direct on the third uh, in your, in our fourth house. So, what can happen? If there are some complications, delays, or stressful situations around home, property, place of living, it will start untangling itself. It might be the last few days around the beginning of June when Mercury is retrograde Saturn, when you have to correct something, fix something, there's still some possible escalation of relationships with relatives, with parents, extended family, re-evaluation of the family situation, or home, or place of living situation, but it all starts falling together and if you've done the right changes you start seeing great improvement after the first week of june funny enough when mercury was retrograde in my fourth house for the last one month i've been doing we've been building like an outside kitchen you, you might hear noises around so this is finally coming to an end when mercury turns direct exactly in a couple of days <laughs> so whew. and then mercury moves into your fifth house on june the 13th and uh, that means more fun coming into your life more fun social contacts mercury social planets fun fifth house is to enjoy yourself parties and so on uh, enjoyable communications uplifting self-affirming um contacts and friendships you know uh, plus mercury was retrograde in your fifth house for some time in part of may so if there were some complications in romantic love life or with uh, creative projects or anything you call your baby, it might be your children, my children were quite complex and Mercury turned retrograde in the fifth house. They were like, <laughs> so things will start improving there as well from the middle of the month. Or, um, or if there was some, like for example, fifth house rules, any business creative ideas that you have or any creative projects, if you rework them in some way, you're going to start seeing good results, things moving forward when Mercury moves into your fifth house. Then there is a full moon in Sagittarius in our 11th house on the 14th of June. So for a couple of weeks, they can also be focused on uh, more sociability, you know, social networks, 11th house is friends, um, and some friendships coming into full of fruition, more emotional and emotionally attaching moments with friends. In extreme cases, it can be you ending some friendship or affiliation with a group. 11th house also your followers, your clients. They can be a escalation or seeing the results of something you've been doing there already in regards to engage them more or whatever. You can start seeing the results for that. 11th house is gains. If you've been working on something to create more gains, again, you can see some results around the middle of the month. And gains, income, you know, bonuses and so on, or some kind of a social recognition, bringing out some product to the public, in the public eye, whatever, uh, that it's a completed, seeing results, you know, or seeing is it, is it good job, is it not. But there is definitely big focus on this fifth house and it expands more and more the month goes. The sun is the whole month in the fifth house of children having fun, romantic enjoyments, Mercury, 
goes there from the 14th and Venus from the 23rd and will continue to be there both Venus and Mercury go over till the middle of July which means fantastic time for holidays to have fun to let your hair down to enjoy yourself to make yourself center of attention or to take some roles where you're in the center or some kind of to do something more entertaining or if you're in the entertainment industry you can see things picking up in art theater whatever or if you're in um, someone like me who presents and puts themselves in the focus in the center you can notice yourself your confidence rising and of course that can improve your romantic life overall having fun because you look Venus when it's in the fifth house you have more fun you feel more confident you feel more flirty and others like it and they're attracted to you fifth house is the house of the sun so you become like a light that shines and because it's in Gemini, you'll probably be more witty, more entertaining, more fun. Uh, and you'll attract others, like following, you know, <laughs> towards you. And like, uh, you know, just because of your persona shines. And some cre new creative projects can come to you. You can be enjoying them more. And it can be good to do some sport for fun as well, some enjoyable things as well. Um, another thing is that around... June the 11th to the 19th, before Venus goes into your fifth house, sorry, I'm jumping a bit back, Venus will make a few conjunctions with very excitable planets, with the North Node and with Uranus in your fourth house. Something new can be born, maybe about decoration in your home, you can go a bit crazy with new styles, uh, or some, something new developments in your home and family, that you do something unusual with your family, or maybe some surprising a bit, you know, unstable and bit surprising events that happen around that family. Uh, but I, I would ask you to slow your horses a little bit, even if such things appear. Um, taking some crazy decisions about family, home, place of living, because a Saturn is squaring Venus um, as the last aspect around the 18th, 19th. So you might have to rethink some things and be more practical in such approaches. But then Venus starts making good aspects of things. The final aspects of Venus are good, so things really improve. So even if there's some kind of a stressful things moving around and so on around the middle, uh, things will come down again. Well, there we go, guys. That's your horoscope, and I'll see you next month. Check me out in the new channel.